For me, my history with Black Panther, with Black Identity, with Black Film is a long one. It's a complicated one, as it is for almost all black people. Um, now, I'm the first child of immigrant parents, and I remember watching films with my mother and just completely just being immersed in it. I wasn't just watching Julie Andrews or Audrey Hepburn or Deborah Kerr. I, was, I became those women. But as I grew a little bit older, I started to realise that none of my beloved Hollywood heroines looked anything like me. Where, where were the women who looked like me? And as I got older into primary school, I, I started to notice that there was, a, there was a lack of black faces in history books. But I guess one of the most beautiful things that I think about my life growing up was that I had a very vivid imagination and I would conjure up all these stories and worlds in my mind to escape and I would live there. But of course, my parents who loved me were, you know, they lived in the real world where opportunities for a girl who looked like me were very, very limited. They'd say to me, you know, who do you know who's a black actress who is comfortably wealthy? And of course, I didn't know any, anybody because there was just a huge, um, a huge lack of representation. But when I was 15, I finally had enough of the lack of black history on the curriculum, even during Black History Month, and I decided that something had to be done. So I wanted to put on a musical and I started to do more research. And as I did more research, I started to see the faces of people I desperately needed growing up. So Sidney Poitier, first black man to win an Oscar, Aluada Equiano, black man who was a free slave who helped end the slave trade in the UK, Diana Ross, Dorothy Dangerous, uh, Soul to Soul, Stevie Wonder. And so we put on this musical and it was an incredible success. And e even just to see white children educated about our richness of history was amazing. And it made me think, okay, maybe this is something, it's, it's a career I could do in the future. But when I was 18, um, I still ended up at university studying law, very, very bored and in need of, of a creative outlet. And so I decided to set up my YouTube channel and I scripted the scenes, I wrote the jokes, I played all the roles in my little university room. And the more I embraced myself, uh, my gifts, black culture, the more my channel grew and grew. And, you know, t t today it's taken me a long time to start shaking off that self-doubt that tells me that as a black creative, um, opportunities are limited for me. Um, the dream of being in Hollywood is, is limited for me. But when I do get into that headspace, I remember the stories of Issa Rae, of Letitia Wright, of Lupita Nyong'o, of Michaela Cole, and they tell me, they, they symbolise to me that the door is starting to open. And the reason that Black Panther is just so incredibly important is because it shows that blackness is regal, blackness is intelligent, and it symbolises how unbreakable the black spirit is. And one thing I really want all of us to remember is as great as it is for us to embrace and celebrate Wakanda, it's equally as important or even more important to embrace Africa as a whole, especially with the way um, the Western world has portrayed it. And for me as a black creative, it's an encouragement to keep going, to keep writing, to keep acting, to keep dancing. And it tells me that we're not just the supporting roles anymore, we're the main roles, we're all of the roles. And it tells me that finally we are seen and that Finally, we are accepted.